Hey guys, I'm Nick and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial we will take a look on how to create this vellum spaghetti thingy that attaches to any sort of collider object. Pretty easy setup that I would call a beginner setup and as always doing my best to explain everything so it's easy to follow and you learn something new. Before we start, I would like to say huge thanks to everyone who is supporting me by purchasing my project files and assets. Link to my website and Gumroad store is in the description. Your support allows me to create these tutorials and share cool stuff about Houdini. So if you want to support me, check out my website and grab a project file or maybe an asset pack. I'll be very, very grateful if you do so. Let's jump in Houdini and so we will need to create a few things. Um, let's start with a collider object, which is basically tube, tube, primitive type set to polygon, pretty dense number of columns here. We merge two of them, be sure to check the end caps, and VDB from polygons, voxel size set to 0.04, VDB reshape, SDF, uh, VDB smooth, convert VDB to polygons, and this is the Labs Auto UV. Um, labs is a kind of like Houdini toolkit. You can download that from Houdini uh, website or also I think in the Houdini launcher you can also download that. But basically what it does, it creates the UVs. Not the best, but definitely works for this case. And then a null and I see it's a cross, so out cross. Um, that's all uh, for this thingy here. And then we can drop another geo node. Um, let's see what we got here. So I want like a few lines and then they kind of get attracted or sucked to the um, our collision geometry, which is in this case, it's this plus sign, which is here. So obviously we will start with a line, um, line length set to 10 points to 80, pretty, not that dense, but yeah, like have a few points. Um, then we drop a transform node and rotate it 90 degrees so it's flat on the ground. And then I want a shape in which I want these lines to be kind of distributed. So I grabbed a platonic or platonic and radius set to 2.5 and solid type set to icosahedron. Um, you can experiment with uh, all of these icosahedron, dodecahedron, sector ball, um, you to teapot. Um, and, oh no, <laughs> but that's cool. All right, so yeah, let's stick with the uh, icosahedron. And then an attribute wrangle. Some of you guys ask me how to learn VEX. Basically, this is how you learn VEX. I mean, bit by bit. So yeah, um, basically we want our normals to be pointing outwards. We actually, I don't know if these are normals, but yeah, basically normals are actually blue. So yeah, we want them to be like this. And string ID and ptnum, um, basically I want to store point number and some sort of a variable. I will explain later why we need to do that. Um, then we drop a copy to points, all the settings are, I think, are default, and we have these lines like this. So now we need to add some vellum constraints. You drop a vellum, vellum hair, or you can drop a vellum string or hair, I don't think that it really matters, but the tricky part here is the edge length scale, and for this one I'm using 0.5 and you can select the visualized th thickness and then you can see here these kind of like visualize the thickness of our hair and this basically determines how thick your spaghetti will be. Damping ratio set to 0 0.0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, yeah. Um, band stiffness set to 1 multiplied by 0 0.001. One. Um, that's it. And we drop two nulls, one geo and one constraint. And you know what? When I was like starting with Houdini, I always was afraid when after like Vellum things we go into the dope nets. And I was like, why we, we can do that in one level here in the sub level? But you know what? Eventually for me, it became even clearer or easier 
to set up simulations like this. So before we go into the dopnet, we should also introduce our collider and we drop an object merge, specify the obj slash geo2, here it is, we definitely don't want these normals here. And then I want two transforms. So here is a good example of procedural approach. So I don't want any like keyframes here in, in the transform. So I did one transform, which is basically scaling down. And then each frame, I rotate it to be frame number multiplied by three by five and by three. So if we visualize that, it will look like this. But obviously I want some sort of a, like ending state for this simulation. And that's why I <laughs> added another transform, which at frame 180, I basically just like set the values here. And then I use a switch if, which is a new node for Houdini 19. If you are not upgraded yet, uh, I advise you to do so. There are so many cool nodes. And basically when frame number is more than 179, we are using this transform, which is static. And before that, we are using this transform, which is kind of this radiation. So here in the switch, if you can see that we go, 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 and boom, we stop at 180. Obviously you can do that with keyframes, right? So please don't hate comments below this video because I know that we can do that in, with keyframes, but I truly believe that it doesn't hurt to learn how to do things another way. Then I drop out Collider and then I also dropped an ROP Alembic node um, just because I'm exporting that uh, to Cinema 4D. I will show you how to set up the rendering here in Redshift, but I will also show you how I did that in Cinema 4D. Now we will need to drop a DOP network. So let's go here. So what do we have? You will have nothing here because yeah, obviously that's a fresh DOP network without anything. We will need a Velm solver, right? Um, Substep set to five, constraint duration set to 200. Then you plug the Velm object, which is easiest node because you don't need to specify anything here. You just like type Velm object and add it here. And then you have your Velm source and subpath should be pointing to our geo and constraint subpath to our constraints. I'm talking about these geo and con after vellum here. So then let me skip this vellum attach because I want to show you what happens. So also skip the pop drag. Now you drop a pop attract node and for now force scale is set to be 10. But if the force scale will be 10, our strands will just bounce from our collider. So let me visualize that. See, they are like bouncing off of that. So we need to limit their speed and we have pop speed limit here. I just set maximum speed to be two. Let's see the difference. So here you can see that they are not bouncing away that much. And this already looks kind of cool, but there is this Vellum Constraint node that is extremely useful for any sort of, like, you know, in, in real world, any surface, any two objects, they have their friction where they maybe even stick to each other with like some microscopic force. I don't know physics that much, but that's how I think it is. I, I'm not the most reliable source though. But basically I want this Vellum Constraints node after our Vellum source and I want the create constraints set to each frame, constraint type attached to geometry, group type points and target geometry, target group type set to points and target pass should be our out collider. And here how it looks now. Here, this is a good example. So you can see that this spline here is attached. And you also see that it kind of doesn't hit the geometry, but that's also because we have this closest point setting here enabled. 
and constraint to close this point and use closest location on primitive should be checked and max distance should be checked and in this example where we have 0.5 edge length scale uh, added to our hair it should be set to 0.01 this is basically not like in trial and error but if you change the scale of the thickness of the hair you should also change this so here you can see that it's attached it kind of draws the rest of the hair with it then just to reduce the jittery motion um, the air resistance set to 0.2 um, also after the frame 180 i increase the air resistance to one also in pop attract i decrease the force scale from 10 to zero it helps to reduce some of this jittery thing here also I need a collider object right so after your realm solver, drop a merge, static object, um, sub pass to our out collider, use deforming geometry, use object transform, create active object. Yeah, that's that's it. In physical, I think I set the bounce to be zero and bounce forward to be also um, zero. Yeah, I think that's it here in the dopnet. So let's check how it looks. So here you can see how they attach and kind of spin on on our collider. So now we should drop dop import to get our simulation back and obviously cache that. We drop a dop import here in the dopnet where we like just drag and drop our dopnet. Object mass should be volume O and this shift 8 and import style should be fetch unpacked geometry from dop network. Then we just do a default like file cache, cached out. You can see how it looks for me. You can see we have some rough edges, so I just resampled it. Uh, treat polygon as subdivision curves and length set to 0 0.02. Then I add a poly wire and here wire radius set to 0 0.05. Yeah, everything is default here, I think. UV textures, um, V textures set to be. 0.1 division set to be 4. I think that's also default. We are good with this because right now if I will be exporting this as an alembic it will be around 1 gigabyte but if I run a subdivision here it will be so much more <laughs> gigabytes. I don't know why but first time I was exporting this it was like around 30 gigabytes which was insane. I would say you should subdivide this if you want to render that in Redshift. Here I also dropped a merge just to see how it all looks together. So if you want to like render it here, uh, remember we had our attribute here in that attribute wrangle we set string ID and we can reference that and group primitives by this ID. So let's say we add a group and I say string ID less than three also of course points and add string id and now we can either colorize or we can attach material and here we can choose our group one and we can do just drag and drop your material here and we can do that for i don't know string id equals five so just this one will be targeted so that's if you want to render it out here in houdini i will be exporting this to cinema 4d here how to export that in, in a i think proper way so we drop an assemble node and we check this create packed primitives and then we promote the attribute from point to primitive and the original name should be name so this is how we can access each individual strand or these spaghetti thingies in Cinema 4D and then we drop an ROP Alembic node. In this case, I'm exporting 240 frames. So just hit save to disk and let's open up Cinema 4D and set up this scene. So here we are in Cinema 4D. Um, basically, I just uh, grabbed the Alembic files and dragged and dropped them here. So what we will have is all these are like hairs separated. So the thing that we need to do is add a subdivision surface to every one of them. And again, that's the price to pay for relatively small Alembic size. Um, so yeah, just like drop the subdivision surface on each of these trends. And here's our main geo. Um, basically have this concrete material 
and some plastics and of course uh, three-point light system uh, let me show you so here's our kind of like a fill light here's our backlight and here's our key light at least i think so and then yeah just supply these materials and we have this beautiful setup for the camera what i have here i have keyframe depth of field so it always kind of like points to somewhere in the center of the our collider and camera imager added a bit of highlight compression so yep all right guys so i think that's it for today and thanks a lot for watching i really hope that you learned some new tricks with the uh, volume and if you enjoy my tutorials please consider subscribing to my channel and check out the project files on my Gumroad. This is the best way how you can support me and see more tutorials in the nearest future. I will be back very soon. Bye!